Hi, I Abdi and fit like. A warm welcome to this Doric blether, where we're going to explore aspects of the Northeast, our culture, our heritage, and of course, our tongue as well. But first, some introductions. I'm Peter Reid, I'm a professor at Robert Gordon Varsity in Aberdeen and have I had an interest in the Doric and that includes having created the Doric Literature Portal. I'm Faye Port Gordon in Banffshire. With me is Jackie Ross, Faisalam Fan in Quine and a wheel Kent storyteller working with all kinds of groups from Bernays to adults delivering local tales and legends in the mither tongue. And Alistair Laurie, who has a Peter Heed loon, but bides in Strunhaven now. He's teached our Scotland, latterly at Cults Academy, and he works extensively with the Mearns Writers Group. And his own work is in both English and Doric. So a very warm welcome to you both, Jackie and Alistair. Good like yourself. Nebad at all. Before we start, I should say that we might be giant at some point by my catty for his to be the star of the show and jump up on my desk. And Alistair, your dogs might come home and ah and make a, a barking sound at some point. So um, I hope our viewers can ah bear with us with the animal interjections. Absolutely. Okay. So. I think we'll maybe start our um, discussion, but just maybe thinking about fit, fit the Doric means to us and, and fit place it has in our northeast nuke here. Jackie, would you like to begin? Well, thanks, Peter. Hi. Well, Doric's my mother tongue, and for different language you meet, you, you speak. Is It's about fire, you are, isn't it? It's about your identity. It's about... Um, your ideas, the why you think. And so I guess, you know, Doric is just part of who I am. And I, I've been lucky enough in uh, my life to be able to speak to Doric in most situations I've been in. Um, and you, know, you were saying I was a storyteller and telling in my mother tongue is grand because um, it's a what I can of words to use. That's what my language. I think that's it. It's just fire. I think it's something that's just in us. If you cut us open, Doric is doing the middle of us, isn't it? That's it, like a rock, is it? Otherwise through. Doric, otherwise through. Alistair, I'm fit about you. Well, I wouldn't differ off how much for that. When I thought about the question, my first response was precisely that, that it's kind of Athen to me. It's a while, it's a language of my heart. It's what I, who I spoke when I was a wee loon. It's how I spoke to my daddy. It's how I spoke to my pals in a playground. But I was also struck by the fact that it's possible to, to say that it means nothing to me because it's just the way I speak. It's... And yet there is also the fact that it's, as a writer, it's an enormous advantage because it gives me several, not just one, but several extra gears that I can shift into to say what I want to say. And I can move into English, back, for, back to Doric, or mix the both, as folk did when they were speaking. I, I, I'm I struck by the fact that um, in speech you could say, what do you think you're doing? But you can also say, what do you think you're doing? And that capacity of moving from one language into the other is wonderfully advantageous to a writer. But the main advantage value of Scots, of da Scots and Doric is what Jackie said. Um, I mean, when I was teaching in cults, at a fifth year class, and there was this lassie for Cooter, and she was in awful difficulty finding a book that she had to write about as, as a sort of mini dissertation as part of her higher English. 
And eventually, after trying several things, I went into the bookstore and threw down a copy of Sunset Song in front door and says, hey, look at that, see what you think. I should say, as last I spoke, the purest, the Doric. And I wandered around a class and about 10 minutes after I came up, Laura, finding her looking a wee bit puzzled. And she said, I said, Laura, is, is that right? Are you making anything of it? She said, the words don't seem right. They're, they're, they're not like right, right in a page. So I just took a book up and read it to her. And of course, although it's printed as if it was in English with a spelling, the intonation is pure Doric. And that's how I read it. And her face just lit up. She smiled and she said, oh, why? And that wasn't just she understood it. She suddenly realized that she could have permission to use the way she spoke naturally for something other than just speaking to our pals. And that's the value of Doric for me. Absolutely. And I think I think with our growing up um, with perhaps perceptions that Doric had a particular place. It was a, it was the tongue for the playground. It was the tongue for out on your bike with your pals. Um, it was not the, the, the tongue for the classroom. Thankfully, we're well beyond the horror stories of uh, Bernays being belted or Dean the Tars for, for using it in, in the class. I, I mind um, a story. Um, I grew up, as you both came, in a, a, a wee village in Abde, came to Abde else. And my primary school teacher in primary five in, in the Wyas we villages was of course my aunt's sister-in-law. So outside outside the squeal, I came to her by her first name, but inside the squeal she was Mrs. Stewart. And um, I, I mind her chapping it to her door a day. Um, and she was half a big on speaking proper in class, rightly. Um, but she chapped it to her door a day and she said to my, my father, went and answered it, and she said to my father, aye, aye, Pat, for you, Dean, you wouldn't have hair on a kale, have you? And I mind standing there thinking, my goodness me, Mrs. Stewart speaks like the rest of us. Um, and there, there was kind of that perception, a, a place, just like your lassie in, in the class, the the acceptance or the permission even about speaking it in certain spheres. Aye. Aye. Can I quote something for David Ogston, you can his book, White Stain Country. Aye. It's, it's a, I'm there to read the whole passage, I'll just read a sentence or two, and it's him speaking about when he first came across Lewis Crasick Gibbon. Same, same deal. And it, they said things, his fairmen, men and millers and horsemen and village worthies, heroes and ablachs, that I'd heard myself in the speak of the big folk. They said out loud things I'd thought and sensed and reached for, and been gay near to laugh in it, for they wanted the validity of print. Till I saw them in front of me, the unspoken said, the unsayable made definite. It's a value, I do it, I think. Aye. And it legitimizes I, and your own experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Ken, I think I was real lucky. I had a domni in primary six and seven that legitimized it for us. He guarded us learned poems every year. And I still mine those poems. Charles Murray, of course, we need to be on to your portal and read about Charles Murray, Peter. And, um, you know, and, JMK and all these poems. And it was, it's just saying, but your speaking is worth speaking. And I think a lot of times folk, as you say, then I realize that it is their mother tongue. It's a language, it's got the same rights that or res we should respect it the same way we would respect somebody speaking French or German or Arabic or right. And And I mean, I think, I think that has improved so much our recent years. I mean, I think there's still, there's still some folk that um, maybe have a negative view or a negative perception of it, but I think it's so much better than it was 50, 60, 70, 
um, years ago, and, and I'm sure it, I'm sure that will will continue. Fit, fit. Do you think either a, a about the the sort of perceptions that exist about Doric, or the the misconceptions that sometimes exist about Doric? Jackie. Well, I I think one of the problems is we didn't hear it on the telly, and you I mean you hear it files on the radio, um, like Scots Radio and so on. But because we didn't see an awful lot of, or when it is on the telly, it's usually comedy. So I think we have that perception that Doric is for a laugh, mm -hmm. and we need to get to that and, and change our ideas about that because. You know, you and me all speak about on a serious matter in Doric at Penn, and we need to hear that out in public places and all, I think. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, there needs to be official versions of Doric um, that acceptably do what they're doing. The, it, it's funny, Ken, because it, it's not as if the English did it to us. We did it to ourselves. <laughs> In a, in a kind of uh, self-denial or self-doubt. Um, I, I met a woman I knew when I was a boy who couldn't bear to hear Doric on TV or on the radio because she found it embarrassing. And yet it was the way she spoke herself. And she always said that the finest Scots voice came from Inverness. For in fact, it, it's if they're Gaelic speakers, it's a learned language. They're, they're not speaking Scots at all. Um, and we've had that inbuilt embarrassment about our tongue for far too long. Mm -hmm. You don't get Yorkshiremen embarrassed about speaking broad Yorkshire or Cockneys, mm -hmm. but that's so true. Even yet, it lingers amongst folk that speak Doric. They feel kind of second rate to be using it. There's no reason why they should. I I find it I kind of funny that the 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 Northeast is in many respects quite a classless society. Aye. Um you can in, in general terms, but you you can almost pinpoint um I think the the sort of aspiring middle class of Doric land have deemed this to ourselves. It's nae, nae the folk at the top imposing it necessarily. No. It's, no. it's nae the, the, the folk at the bottom. It's the fact that if you if you went to a guid squeal and you stuck in loons and quines, mm -hmm. you, can, you might become a doctor or you might become a solicitor or a dominie or whatever. Um, and you you had to, to go through that process of losing your... Um, your dialect, and and yet, I, I think that's that's damaging, or it has damaged it. But it's still maybe lingering in, in wee pocketes here and there. The, the, there was that wonderfully ironic comment that my mother often used to me, which was "spick proper." <laughs> <laughs> it's a contradiction in terms, really. I I and I mean I'm 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 struck with what you've you've both said there because you came behind closed doors. If you're watching the news with your, your family and there is something terrible, then you will hear the conversation in your own tongue about just how terrible that actually is. Aye. But I think there's there, there is maybe there is maybe a bit of difficulty associated with what you've said, Jackie, about the, the comic turn adoric that we are a bit uncomfortable about dealing with really bad news or really tragic things. Okay, how do we get across, oh, there's been an AFA accident and six folk have been killed? I, I taught a creative writing workshop uh, some years ago now, a couple of years ago now. I want to say far because I want to pinpoint it, but it was, a Dor it was a writing workshop in Doric. So the seven or eight folk that were there were obviously keen to try their hand at writing in Doric or already did so. And as part of it, one of the pieces of writing I'd prepared to show them was a monologue written as if by someone during the conflict in Yugoslavia after it broke up into separate nations uh, by a Muslim. And dealing with the, the, the 
killings and the troubles that they had to face. And at least three of the folk weren't happy with it. And one was particularly unhappy because she felt that this piece of writing was disrespectful to the folk of Kosovo mm -hmm. because it was in Doric. And I couldn't get my head around that, as if somehow, and of course it was precisely that, she expected Doric to deal with either the kale yard or something comic, and therefore it could not be used to describe people's suffering. I, I, I mean, have to get I, past that. I, I, I agree with that, and mm -hmm. again, I've, I've had experience of this, far. I've been maybe speaking to a group. Um, and I may have ended up <clears throat> quoting, for example, Benny Gok, Flora Gary's masterpiece, mm -hmm. and, um, or even worse, I've read the whole poem and folk have reacted as if it's a comic piece. Now, right. you, you, you kind of get to that final two lines um, about it's uh, our mother and it would brack our heart to leave the hull, it's brack in mind to bide. You kind of you kind of read that without being impacted by the the solemnity and the seriousness and the mm -hmm. beauty of that that poem, mm -hmm. but because I think some folk are preconditioned to hear the tongue and they think it's comic. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I I think we just we have to plow through that. We have to just try and convince the BBC Scotland to get Mayor our mother tongue on so folk get used to it. In a way that we've got used to over the years, Ganawafi standard English and hearing all these different accents and folk done a blink new. But I think there's going to be a real cringe fest to get through that wah almost. It is like a wah. Um, but some who we have to brack through it, I think. I and I mean I think there's <clears throat> there's still I was listening to a bit on Radio Four on Sunday there was a bit on about Doric and the the course at Aberdeen um, Varsity um, and it was it was it was a good piece and Sheena was on it um, and um, in the the course of it they spoke about how some folks still have the preconception that it's slang mm -hmm. and it's not proper mm -hmm. English. Yeah. Again, and I, I think we we have to keep keep plugging away at that. There are difficult topics, and it it maybe is difficult to um, to get the sense of gravity sometimes. But we've got to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think part of that might be that you know I'm used to speaking a Doric. I'm not used to screaming in it. I don't write as much, and I think to some extent, to get that weightiness. Um, it's the quote you were giving earlier, Alistair, you, can, you have to see it written down to give it on a gravitas. There's that kind of mentality, isn't there? So Aye. maybe it's about in the squeals, if we're giving the bairns a chance to write in it and read in it, as we were speaking it, we'll maybe start to give across that idea. It is a language, it's no slang, it's not just a dialect. I mean, Doric might be a dialect of Scots, but it's a language. Um, and we need to educate folk of it up. In fact, it's, and it's also closest in its, in its purity to the original version of English itself. I mean, it, it's actually closer to Old English than English is. <laughs> the, the difficulty is exactly that, how you, how you write it. I mean, in writing it, I'm conscious of many difficulties to do with the spelling. Uh, because the way that I, I have writers in my group who also write in Doric, and we have lengthy debates about how we might spell a given word, and indeed arguments about it, because they come for, I mean, one of them comes for, is a Tunzer, it comes for Everdeen. And just, the way he says a word makes him inclined to spell it a different way for the way I would say it. And when it comes to different vocabulary, you're lost. I mean, fit, fit words do you two use for a seagull? Well, we say a gow in Bucky. Uh -huh. Aye. And See, Jackie? I'm a, I'm a fairman coin. I'm a landlubber. I don't know anything about gulls apart from the come in the blue. All right, okay. Maven knew it is uh, further away. Um, <laughs> well, down in Bervie, there's something, I'll, I'll probably do an injustice to the good folk of Bervie, but it's something like a piau, whereas in Peterheads, it's a scurry. Mm -hmm. 
Now, yeah. how do you reconcile that? And there's different words OILs as well. And that's difficult. The book I quoted for earlier, David Ogston's book, which mere folk should read, because he takes it one step, a step further than Grasset Gibbon did. He doesn't just use the lilt of the tongue. He actually tries to spell it. And it's surprisingly well written and easy to read. But there's difficulties even in there. I, the first three times I came across the word H-A-V-E-R-S in the book, I couldn't make heeding or tell of what he was saying because I was it, the idea haver yeah. didn't fit what was being said. And it was at the third occasion I realized that that was just how he was choosing to spell haver, mm. not haver. Okay. And I would have put an L in it, but that's a difficulty. Yeah. There's no standard form of it. No, but Ken, it's funny. I was just, to me, diversity is one of the joys of our language, uh, and I, I, fit I went is to be able to keep that diversity and still manage to communicate with one another. And uh, it is tricky. Um, I, I I was working with a group um, that will remain nameless, but uh, we had the same arguments. We fit why to spell words, and in the end, we sat down and wrote a glossary that we would agree on for um, wordies. And we agreed that other folk for other areas would spell it different. Um, and obviously you kind of do that for a, a, a universal standard, if you like. But uh, no. I, I, I did like the idea of being able to hug on to our little wee idiosyncrasies. The di I, I agree about the diversity. Uh, but I, I've come, sadly, I think, but I've sadly come to the conclusion that if we're going to have a printed form of Scots or Doric mm -hmm. that is universally able to be read, and that's dealing with things like the news or politics or whatever, it's going to have to be standardised. Mm -hmm. um, and that, does, that doesn't mean that the diversity is lost. It just means there's a standard form. The fact there's a standard form in English doesn't stop folk from writing in dialect versions of English. Or indeed, if you think about it, folk using standard English spelling, but still saying it their own way. I mean, Wordsworth, for example, rhymes water with matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Shakespeare's rhymes are, a, a, you know, gloriously unlike standard English. But, um, and th there's also a difficulty as a writer that how far do you go? Um, if I write the, the words, he could de at. Mm -hmm. Now, he, de, at, I'm happy with, because most folk with any knowledge of Scots or Doric will be able to get into that. But mm -hmm. the write could as English spelling or C-W-I-D. Mm -hmm. And once you start getting to that phonetic level, are you beginning to make your writing unintelligible to just about anybody except folk near your family and friends? I, there's, a, there's a very interesting discussion around sort of spelling and orthography. Aye. And I think there's, there's, there's kind of a discussion about um, that for Scots and that for, um, for Doric. And I think one of the, the, the challenges for, for Doric and indeed for Scots is maybe that if you go two or three miles down the road, the words and the pronunciation and therefore the spelling or the, the why folk will perceive the spelling to be will change. Um, when I did my professorial lecture, which I did on Doric as you both came, I said right at the beginning, I come for the very western mace tip of Amsterdam, I'm about two miles for the mouth of the River Spey, and we'll have words here, or we'll pronounce words here, differently for somebody in Peterhead, or somebody in Fermartin, or somebody in the Geary. Um, and But you'll you'll get the gist to it. Any, mm -hmm. of, them, any of them that I, I found, and it was my mother that, that kind of alerted me to this, that um, the word chav, which is in the best, most descriptive, fantastic words in Doric, um, in its beloved, I think, of anybody that loves the dialect, we tend to say here, kyav, as if it was ky, 
uh -huh. um, rather than T-Y, and, uh -huh. and pronounce the Y mayor. Um, and, but if I say Kyavanawa, you would still cane exactly what I mean, even though I didn't say it in maybe a, a, a Buchan Y or a, a D side Y. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I could say I, you could possibly hear my dog in the background. That's it. It's just come in. It's half a fine to hear it. Uh, I'm amazed the catty hasn't jumped up and, <laughs> and showed his tail or, or his backside into the camera. But I think that sense of place is, is really interesting. It's deeply involved. Uh, the, before I go into that, I, I was thinking about Burns just now. Um, Burns, I mean, Burns came from the Northeast, or his folk came from the Northeast, yeah. and yet he's associated with Ayrshire. Yeah. And if you look at Burns' writing, it's not pure Ayrshire. It's an amalgam of various aspects of Scots. And it's almost as if he was doing what McDermott tried to do a couple of hundred years later and create a viable Scots that could be spoken by Abdi. It's possible to tack Holy Willie's Prayer. And I've often heard it read with a southwest accent. But you can tack it in. Without it in the heavens does dwell, as it pleases best I sell, since in the heaven, and so on. It, without blinking, I can read it that way. And maybe that's a way forward. I don't know. But what you say about different places is right. And the greatest schism, is the word I coined for it, I think, is between Fairman and Fisher. Um, there, there is a, a sometimes unbridgeable gulf between the two. Aye. And I think, I think that's, that's an interesting point. Mayor generally beyond the, the the dialect. I think that's a cultural thing oh, for right. the Northeast. Um, right. the, the schism that could exist between you can the coast and twa miles inland. Um and, and that's that's ingrained in our, our mentality, I think, or at least the, the mentality of those of us that have been born and frocked up here. Aye. I mean, we a wedding in the 70s. I mean, it, we were there because of Loon. He was Fisher and he was related to my mother's side, the family. And he'd married this last he'd bid in a firm just outside Langside. So about three mile away. And, uh, but she came off a firm. And it reached that point in the wedding where the young couple had come down into the hall, dressed in their finery, ready to go off on their honeymoon. And uh, as they came in, this old dame sitting ahead me turned to her neighbour and says, I don't know, like to see mixed marriages. <laughs> Aye. <clears throat> Aye. And there's a fundamental truth in that. Aye. But of course, for, for, for years, the, the, the Twa communities hardly, hardly ever mixed. No, no. And I mean, that's, that's the same in this bit of the coast as I would imagine. And, um, Peter Heed and the Broch and, and elsewhere. Aye. 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 You know, it's, 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 very, it's, it's very interesting that, that sort of um, schism of, of the language. And I suppose it connects to um, the thing that often goes back to the preconceptions or the stereotypes about, about the tongue. Um, you can, that it's so rich in terms about fermin or particular terms about fishing and we have mm -hmm. you can I think Alistair you said to me Ence, we have 47 different words for a grape or for whatever Aye. and Aye. and you, you can we, we tend to we tend to get alpha anxious about these words and the importance of these words and I'm actually quite relaxed if redundant terms are preserved for the sake of caning them, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily need to be in everyday usage. No, I think, I, what do you think, Jackie? I do. Well, I, I just need you to be that. I mean, Fairman has changed, fishion has changed and I, I expect, although I oh, was I. reading a bit about, you know, the life i gone out to sea, and I think there's still a lot of the actual lifestyle pretty much the same as it's been for a long time. It's a hard, hard life. But you're right, there's no point in hanging on to words that we don't use in everyday um, occurrence. And, you know, the youngsters are coming up with new words that right. did fit, we, uh, fit their intel. 
because that's the language develops, isn't it? It does change over time. It's no set in steam forever. And has to change because if it doesn't, if it, if a language isn't changing, isn't capable of changing, it's dead or almost dead, mm -hmm. and it's become like Latin, and we might as well just bury it and forget about it. Mm -hmm. Language has to be changing and developing and growing, has to be capable of dealing with things and now. It's very nice to have an archive of how it was once used, and that's, it's useful and it's pleasant to look at. But it's no more least to somebody Biden and Peter Heed nowadays to can the 47 different words for a grape. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I like the fact that when I look on, neither again on social media much, I'm more all for it, but um, I see my brother's son and his children, they're on social media a lot with Peter Hayden, a gang on social media to find out, you know, history of Peter Hayden, all photographs and things. And enough a lot of the chat that is conducted is done in Doric. Mm -hmm. They're spelling the way they speak, they're using the words that they speak with. And I think that's a healthy sign. That's that's the way it'll keep alive and develop in the future. Right. Okay, there's all sorts of mess about how they spell it and so on, but it doesn't matter. Folk are using it. It's, I mean, I think, to me, I think you're right. We have to look at standardised English. If we're needing to get to the point where we take it seriously and we can de that news in Doric, mm -hmm. whatever, there's going to have to be a certain element of standardisation. But I spell different depending on my audiences. Right. So if I'm writing a wee email to a pal, I'll just spell it phonetically because they'll can because I'm saying. Um, if I'm doing something for, I don't know, the squeal, I'll probably um, do more Doric light and, and I would spell the T-H-E instead of right. or things like that. So I adapt depending on my audience, I think. Um, right. So, and I, I think we sh one of the joys of it is that folk have the freedom to do that. Can the spelling's an upper hand up for a lot of birds. And if you can say, ah, spell it whoever you like, <laughs> they're actually more likely to hear a go. Right. I, think right. it, I think it's often encouraging though, to see just the, how common the dialect is on social media. It's it it warms the cockles of your heart when you when you see it. I have exactly the same experience here, Alistair, in the 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 local sites or amongst um, you can friends that are on, on the the various social media that I'm on. And you you have a moment where you think, oh, I wouldn't spell it like that. But that's that's me being the pedantic purist. Oh. I'd far rather that I saw them speaking or writing in the clake in our tongue uh -huh. and if it's if it's spelt differently or incorrectly i can i can live with that because if it would be far worse for me would to be on be on social media in 2020 in the northeast of scotland and see no trace of it uh -huh. that would be our fan. it's the most promising sign that the cringe is disappearing aye mm -hmm. yeah. aye that's, that's i think true. I, I think it's often interesting, um, the, the Doric Film Festival last year that Frida Morrison and Scots Radio um, organised was just a superb showcase for, um, you can, the tongue in contemporary society, with the tongue in, in modern media. And fit fit warmed, to use that phrase again, fit warmed the cockles on my head was the the Bernays at Meat Hill in um, Fraserburgh, and they were one of the they were one of the winners. Um, just to hear how vibrantly it, it's still being used, and again that varies from fa fa place to place. I think maybe the mere dormitory tunes around the tune, it, it's it's maybe it's maybe under a bit of mere pressure there, but in some places out by. It's as vibrant and, and lovely as it ever was. Um, I better just say, was me tell Fraser about that or Peter Heed? Peter Heed. Peter Heed, just, just in case we could on anybody right now to complain. Complain. Good point. Good point. The Smith half agreed Doric up in Fraser and R. The Brocher Bra. Aye, well, um, 
in a my students um, this past year has created Fraser Baron film, um, the, the archive, um, uh, James Taylor's fantastic local history interviews. And it's it's a terrific resource, but for these it kind of, if you like, added value is the fact that Andrew has launched a simultaneous Doric site there. So the Hale site's translated into Doric. And of course, most of the films uh, that were recorded, the interviews with the fishermen or the shopkeeper or whatever back in the 1980s, there are in Doric, and that's just a, a, a treasure trove. So I, Broch and Peter Heed, and I think Rax Ruin the Coast, there's there's Guid Doric being spoken. Mm -hmm. so, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, Fit, do you think, um, Fit, can I ask you, pick you on the spot maybe, about um, favourite words or important words? or words that you think maybe deserve to come back. Do you have any thoughts uh, about that? Well, I, I don't care if it's gone into fashion, but I do think the new in particular, there's no better word than sconnert. <laughs> I just think that that sums up when not a lot of folk are people It's a brilliant word. It's just, wonderful. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a pal who once said it was the appropriate collective noun for a group of dominies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you a word, Alistair, that you're af a fondo? I have a number I'm af a fondo. Um, I'm not sure that I, I want to resurrect words. I, I'm, uh, uh, that takes us back to grapes and 47 different kinds. And if, if words have died, they just give them a decent burial. But um, the, there are, in my own writing, I want to use a word unless I've heard it. Uh, there was a, I mean, I still, I love Hugh McDermott's poetry at the point of idolatry, but certain words he uses, like left for sky, still stick in my craw a bit because it hasn't been used since the Middle Ages. Um, I'll start with one. Uh, smoren. Smoren with a call. Uh, there's no English expression, or indeed other Scots expression, comes close to describing that bubbly, miserable, dreek, horrible feeling that you get when you've got a call. Just smoren with it. And uh, yeah, I love that word. Shall we do a round robin each and then do some more? Or? Aye, that's fine. I'll, I'll give you, um, and I think there's there's kind of a common theme here. I just love sotter. Oh, oh aye. Fit yeah. as sotter. Aye. And, and the, the, the thing is, subtly, subconsciously, I think what arcane the difference between a sotter, a burich, and a menia. Oh, aye. Oh, right. can, and we would just instinctively use the right word, but I think Sotar has just got such descriptive tendencies, and it it marks it marks me think of my parents. But you can think you're accused of marking a Sotar. It takes you back to being five, and right. you've you've dropped your bit of cake or your fine piece, or you've you've trailed mud up the stairs. You can, and it, it, I think that's a really special word. I could hear my mother's voice saying it. I fit and sort of. Jackie, have you another well, name? You can, as I, I have, but you've made me think on another name, and I, I don't care if it's polite. Is this going to be there for the watershed? Um, charm. I do feel like, you know, you were just like in dubs. Aye. See, that, it's linked with soccer, isn't it? And I guess it's back to when you were that bare and you were floating a boot in the dubs and trailing oh, dubs, and into the back door. Aye, and plaitron's a good word, you see. Oh, isn't it just, uh... and, and, and funnily enough, that's that same going back to what we were speaking about earlier about how words subtly change, because we would be nearer plutron than mm -hmm. plaitron. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. um, in this bit of Bamshire, but that's that's a grand word. And Flora Gary uses that to to devastating a, effect in uh, in Benigo, which we mentioned earlier. Plight mm -hmm. through Newton Inn. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay. Um, another another word. I, I've I been fond of Nev. Uh, the like so many Doric words, it seems somehow to embody that which it describes. Um, uh, my granda had a, he was an old fisherman, and he was as hard as nails, and he would often, when I was a wee loon, just hurry it up and say, feel like Niv. And reflected about it later, I could see him doing that for more than just playing my wee boy, you know. And it, it also became an image that dominated some of my writing. I've, I've often, the notter is like a, a nev stuck there in the fist, middle of the sea, out gazing it and defying it. Aye, that's, that's a really good thing. I'm, I'm seeing, now that you say that about the notter, I'm, I'm seeing the bow fiddle at Pernocchi in exactly the same the same way. And there's something essentially, Scott, the, the why do our meddle with me thing, uh, something to feel that like nerve. Uh, mm -hmm. I think my my um, second in, I think, would be Jalouse. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, I will liberally, liberally scatter Jalouse in conversation and <laughs> words, uh, writing and emails and so on. And you can, it's one of those in other words, I feel Arthur strongly needs to be current and needs to be used because sometimes you can even with some Doric speakers, you, you kind of see the the um, the flickering, wondering about Jalouse. And I I grew up. My mother used Jalouse all the time, and it's second nature to me. But I think it's an half important word that would would keep in the the, the Doric lexicon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's grand, that is. Well, so now, uh, I think the names I'm thinking about are quite negative, which maybe says something about <laughs> East nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think we're often read it describing things like coerce. You know, I think uh, coerce is a, a great word. It's like, you know, I'll put that positive. Mm -hmm. Dinna be coerce, mm -hmm. be kind. Well, that that's a grand end because us Falcon, uh, us natives up at Gordon, we are called Coos Gordonies. <laughs> um, because in 1890 we shoved the bobby into the harbour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair. Uh, okay, my next word is uh Funert. Oh. And uh, I, I suppose that, that must be a word that very much comes from the fishing tradition, but it, it's used metaphorically as well. I, I, I mean, it was commonly used amongst pals of mine. Uh, there's a fella uh, I was pals with at university, and we often went for a curry on a Sunday night when we got back into Aberdeen before the start of the week. And he would we usually had five or six pints of beer for it, but often before the end of it, he said, I'm just full up. I love that that ability to create metaphors within the language because that's part of its life. Totally, and and mm. you can I think we all love the word for fochen. Oh, it's 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 a broader Scots word. Funat is is something I think much more to our own mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I love oh I'm fair funat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well. And um, to, to wind up this bit, I'm going to I'm going to give three words that in um and there's sort of a common link between them and one is slightly different. Um these are words I think it's it's half important that we hang on to, and they're not necessarily just Doric words. In is spear for us. I'm going to spear it at. I think that's a, a, a really good word. And I love big for building. Oh, he's big in the phone. Um. Um, and the reason I'm grouping them together is because they're words that are so similar 
to the words in Dutch and in German and Scandinavian languages mm-hmm. for ask and to, to build. If you say big a hoose to any day for Norway or Denmark, they can exactly fit your, your meaning. Right. And the, the final end is, I suppose, maybe me saying, I wouldn't have mind this if this end came back. So this is maybe the 48th word for great. Um, and that's that's for store, which is the, the all word for understand. Um, and again, like the other twa, you see its origins back to Dutch and in, in, in German. German. I don't think we'll ever get it back into to, to common use. And maybe we should not, but I, I think those three are, are kind of nice um, group yeah. together. So to wind up, folks, could so, I could, could I mention a couple of words that please, um, similarly? Um, I, I I said I wouldn't have bring words back, but I have a lingering fondness for the way in which folk used to use W as V. My uncle Jim would regular speak about it snarling, or he vrocht half a hard at that. Um, I love that. And just one wee story, it, it, it may just be an individual thing, this, but my granda, when he was young, he was a man that, he was a fair temper, but he didn't like swearing in front of women or in front of birds. Well, certainly not in front of us anyway. And so sometimes he was like a kettle trying to explode as he tried to avoid saying certain words when he'd lost his temper. But most often, his most common imprecation was, we'd be here. And the way he said it, we'd be here. You can't, even as a wee loon, it was something dreadful. And it took me years to realize that the second bit of it, be here, wasn't a swear word itself. <laughs> Why? I, I still, if somebody asked me to write a list of sweary words, I'd be tempted to be writing down, be here. <laughs> as I, as any of the course friends. Aye. Aye. No, I'm and, sorry. And, uh, and also, it's almost said with the, um, the, the sort of um, angst or a firebrand Presbyterian in oh, the aye. All the thunder of the, the, the word of God behind the it. The word of God behind it. Aye, aye. absolutely. No, that, that's, a, that's a grand word. I was going to say, just to, to wind aye. up, um, fit, fit do we think is the, the future? Um, fit does the future look like for our mother tongue, our clake? Um, fit would you like to see? Well, I, I'm feeling real positive. We've got mm-hmm. a university in a, a course there with undergraduates. We've got mere and mere stuff on social media. There is bits and pieces on the telly. There's, you know, the Doric Film Festival. There's loads and loads of stuff going on. Your literature portal. Um, so I, I see lots of positive things about it. And um, I did think, the one plus two languages thing is a, a great thing because um, you know a lot of schools are using Doric as their third language, and and they're using it to celebrate their culture and to speak in the mother tongue. So I, I have lots of positives. Thank you, Jackie. You're so right about the one plus two, and there's fantastic work being done right across the Shire and in Murray. Folk look, like Jamie Fairburn and Banff doing ph- phenomenal stuff. Alistair, fit about you? Um, for once, I'm not going to say an awful lot more because Jackie's kind of summed it up, really. It is a positive time. There are all sorts, all kinds of different things pointing to a healthier future for Doric. Um, at least in my own experience, I mean, I, I had a poem in Doric accepted by a magazine, a poetry magazine based in Oxford. And the editor contacted me after he accepted it, saying it was the first time he'd ever accepted a poem, not in Doric, but in Scots. Yeah. And that's, I, uh, that there are sorts of healthy signs like that. And there's a fair routh of folk, young folk coming along writing in Doric, uh, Shane Strachan at works with the university, 
and I held Boric, a youngster that work alongside him. There's that last editor at the play about um, the woman thinks she's Elvis or whatever it is. Um, no, there's a lot of healthy signs. I, I think I would agree with I would agree with both of you, um, and we've we've got to be optimistic. We've got to keep vigilant and keep campaigning, but we've got to be um, we've got to be optimistic. I'd like to thank you both um, Afa much for um, participating in this in conversation, and um, I'm going to finish with um, a little anecdote that I really love, and it goes back to. Um, what we were saying earlier about um, Doric often being a remarkably classless um, thing. Um, and it's a story um, about Lo o our Lord Semple for bed at Fintry um, on, the, on the dawn. And I suppose this story would be for the 1920s. And Lord Semple spoke the Doric and insisted his barons were brought up speaking the Doric. And a day he was in the gun room at Fintraith and the sweep came in and the sweep did not recognise him and he mistook him for the keeper and he speared at him, Fulang, have you been here? And Lord Semple said, Ach, how are lang? But I'm not going to bide. And the sweep said, Fit na why? Oh, I canna thole the laird, said Lord Semple. Great story, remarkably classless. Um, and I think says something about the ca character of the Northeast as much as it does about uh, your tongue. Mm -hmm. So, Jackie, Alistair, thank you very much. Thank you, folks, for listening to this um, Doric Blether, which is part of the Across the Grain Festival, um, brought to you by Live Life Aberdeenshire. So, from the three of us, cheerio Ainu. Diddle, 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 diddle